Imagine your employer or your supervisor, your uh, teacher, whoever, ask you to um, produce a report that includes a table that they ask you to produce, right? So this is what we're gonna do um, right now and I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. So we go to R and as I've shown in the previous video, we're gonna open an R markdown file like this. All right, we give it a name, uh, markdown, or let's call it table. Keep it in HTML for now. Okay. Um, and R will automatically give you this template, all right, this default code, just to show you how to manipulate it. Actually, we want to delete all of it. We don't need any of it, right? We're just going to delete all of it. So what we're left with is just the YAML header. That's what this thing is called. Okay, so now we're going to have to produce that table that we want to include here, right? Remember that back then we produced a table, uh, I think in week five, um, I pulled up the code here that we used back then in a separate R script, right? Which is open here. So let's go ahead and reproduce that table that we want to include in the Markdown report, okay? We are cleaning the, uh, clearing the environment, we're library, uh, loading the G summary command that we need, we're loading the data, right? We did some data manipulation on some variables there. And then we're producing this table called tab4 using the GT summary package. And if we open that table, remember this is what it looked like. So here we have different characteristics of students, for example, the country of birth, sex, relationship status, and some continuous variables like age, number of terms, life satisfaction, and so forth. We have all these statistics by the various faculties that students are enrolled in, right? Okay. So far, so good. This is the table that we now want to include in our report. Open an empty R markdown file. Let's go back there. Um, and actually, to feature any code here, we have to insert what's called a code chunk. You can do this by going to code, insert code chunk, or use a shortcut, which is control -Al and alt and I. Okay. So this is an empty code chunk, and we can define it now in setting some options here. First of all, let's name it. We give it a name called table because we're going to input our uh, table here. And then let's set some options like echo equals false. This will just tell R that none of the code should be included in the output, but just the actual um, the table output file, right? But not the actual code. All right. And then we go ahead and just copy paste all of our table code here. Pasting it in here. Maybe let's condense it a little bit, save space. All right, like this. Okay. Um, we did this because our markdown is a closed environment. It cannot just pull from anywhere and it cannot just pull any information from anywhere. You actually, whatever you're going to include, the report has to be loaded within the actual markdown file. This includes packages as well, right? So if you are in your code using any package later, it has to be loaded within our markdown. Okay, let's add just a very brief text here saying table. This is my first report uh, including a table. So one header, a text, and then our table. Let's go ahead and knit that and see what happens. We're gonna choose again a, a place here for our um, output. We're gonna call it table and save it. Now it's running trying to knit this report. Let's work in. And here it is, okay? This is our first HTML report. Admittedly, it doesn't look very nice, does it? But we do have the general logic and structure down now. We have a title, author, date, uh, a header, right? Some text and then our table that we produced um, with R. This is the basic setup. Now, 
I advise you to follow a slightly different procedure. All right, this is the basic setup. Let's go back to R and let's change some things and start customizing. First of all, let's clean up the file a little bit. What we did here is actually include the whole code that is required to produce that table inside the R markdown file. This is one approach uh, to go with. Many people work like this, but imagine you have 10 tables in your document, right? This makes your R markdown file very long. And you might do some data cleaning in one code chunk that you later also gonna need for another table, right? So my point is that it becomes very messy and, and, and cluttered. So one approach that I really like is actually outsourcing your analysis into separate R scripts, like we did in all the previous weeks, and then just pulling the script itself into the R markdown. That way, if we want to change a table, we can go to the particular R markdown, uh, R script, change the table, and then keep the reference in the R markdown file. So in that setup, which I'm going to show you now, it's basically dividing up the analysis from producing the output, right? Layouting the report. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's just delete here the code that we pasted in. Now let's go ahead and use the function source to call on an existing R script, right? And to actually ex execute that script. We call source and then we need to now tell R markdown where this file is that we want to run. In my case, I'm just copy pasting here the direction to my folder. Um, for some annoying reason, right? We have to change the backslashes back to forward slashes. Um, don't forget that um, this is likely going to be an issue if you're in a European setting, right? And then we're going to call on the name of the actual script. In my case, it's called week nine R markdown table. Okay, dot R, don't forget the ending. And we put this in quotation marks. All right, don't forget to give the R code chunk a name called table, then comma echo false saying this is not um, showing the script. So before we run this, we also have to now actually tell our markdown that we want to include the object that we are defining in the script, right? Which is tab four. So we just list the name of the object here that the actual script produces. So our markdown now knows that not only do we want our markdown to run that script, right? Clean the data, do the analysis, produce the output. We now also want to include that output here in the report. So let's run that, see if it looks the same than before. Okay, here it is in the output window. Uh, we can open it in the browser. Again, not the most beautiful report yet, but we're going step by step and I'll show you how the basic principles work and then we go from there to, to make it a nicer looking uh, report step by step. Okay, so the, the key message here is that um, try to keep a tidy R markdown file and try to outsource your analysis. So we have a separate script that produces the table, right? And then we reference that script within the R markdown file using the source function and we include the name of the output that we actually want to display um, later on. So this will have additional benefits as the analysis and the project grows. In the future, we're going to have separate scripts for actually loading our packages, for importing our data, and then producing each output separately, and then referencing them in the R markdown file. This is going to be easier later on when we go back and make changes in our analysis and in the project overall. And this is the approach that we're going to be following now in the, in the, in the next couple of videos.